Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Egg Gunner Magazine, Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. Well, here we are, 2023, and let's hope 2023 is considerably better than 2022. Well, at least for me, because I shot like an absolute spanner all the way through 2022. Now, what are we gonna do today? Well, today, I thought we'd change something different. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of air arms. I'm an Air Arms Ambassador, to be you know 100% honest with you. I'm a member of the Air Arms Spring Gun Team. Um, I'm actually the captain, although if Claire has seen my scores from 2022, I think there's a possibility that I'm going to be getting my P45 in the post very, very soon. Um, but I love all things Air Arms. However, Virock also make amazingly good guns. Now, I own two HW hundreds, one in two two, one in one seven seven. I own an HW ninety eight. I have an HW ninety five on loan from Viroc or from Whole Cartridge. Thank you very much. And I've managed to borrow this, the HW ninety seven K from my good friend Alex Larkin. Um, he said, "Give it a go." And I'll be honest with you, I've never shot a ninety seven K. I know a lot about them. I know they come in multiple different styles. They come in the 97K. Um, this is actually the KT, so it's the thumbhole model. They have a synthetic model, um, and they have a synthetic one with stainless steel upper. I think it's stainless steel, it might be coated. Silver upper we'll go with. Um, now, I'll let you into a little secret. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of the TX200. It's my favorite gun. This is every bit as good. Please don't tell Claire that I said that, but I know so many people who shoot the 97. And I say, I've never shot one in competition. I've, I've had the odd shot with one, but I've never shot one in competition. But I've seen the levels of accuracy that they can put in. And they are a truly brilliant rifle. And Virac are a great company, and whole cartridge you import them are lovely to deal with. So I thought, well, it's about time I got to grips with an HW97. So let's see how we go. Let's shoot a few targets. Let's see what kind of accuracy we can get. And let's start 2023 with a bang. Welcome to Life at the Range. It's always good when you record a piece to camera and then when you go to do the editing and you download the piece of, uh, of the piece of footage and then realize you didn't actually press start. So we're just gonna have a little quick look at the HW97KT. Now, as I said, this is the thumb hole stock belongs to Alex Arkin. Now the HW97 is very, very good for right and left handers because it's ambidextrous. You can look from the right and from the left because you've got this nice, equal side on both. So it's designed as an ambidextrous rifle. Um, safety catch on the left hand side. We've checked to make sure this is all clear. Available in 177, 2225. And I've actually known someone who's said they have one in a 20, but I've never actually seen one of those in a gun shop or anything like that. So it's something I'd actually I need to check. Um, 11, meter, 11 millimeter dovetail uh, on top so that you can fit a scope. These are a set of BKLs, but sports match work just as well. Does not have iron sights. If you want a rifle like this that shoots with iron sights, um, the HW77 is essentially the same rifle, but it has iron sights as well as a dovetail rail. Also has this thing, which is a baffle at the front, uh, makes it slightly quieter. Um, doesn't have a UNF, like uh, the TXHC, so you can't screw another silencer onto it. Although I think this is removable and you can actually fit a silencer to it. Um, I'm sure I've seen someone with a silencer, but essentially that's about it. It's a, a superb rifle, incredibly well built. Um, if you want a more in-depth look at the HW97, a breakdown or something like that, then let me know in the comments below and that's something we'll go into. But today, all we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot it and see how accurate it is. Okay, so we've got our first target set out at 25 yards. It's what you would shoot a 15 millimeter target out in HFT. Now, as I said before, this gun is the KT version. Now, even though we've got the adjustable butt pad, I'm too fat 
to shoot it off the deck. So everything I'm going to be doing is out the shoulder. Now, when you've watched my TX videos, I've got the aftermarket stock, which has got the deeper forehand and the drop butt pad, so I can raise it nice and high. But this gun is predominantly designed to be shot from the shoulder. So that's how we're going to shoot it. Um, on top, we've got a Hawk Air Max 10x42 scope. That's the half mil dot version. Absolutely brilliant scope for HFT and for plinking, hunting, whatever you want to do. Um, rated for air guns. Um, and we're shooting JSB Diablos uh, 177s. Um, the gun is standard internals, no 22 millimeter high compression bits, although the trigger has been polished. Now it's got the brilliant record trigger, but we're gonna go into that in a little bit more detail in a minute. But let's fire a shoe, sh a, a shoe shots or even a few shots down range. Now, one thing that I love and hate is it's got a push button on the front so that you can crack the under lever. My fingers are too fat and I can't quite do it. So I have to go with my right hand, click it, and then cock it. It's not a big problem, but the push button is nice and safe. You know, it stops it accidentally dropping open, but it's just something I'm not used to using. So let's get on, let's fire three shots. We'll put the first one down there as a marker and then we'll aim at that. So again, grip the peg, Constant pressure on both sides. Good cheek position. Watch the front of the barrel, see how much it recoils. Okay, first shot. You see, it's not a problem. It's just something getting used to. There is a part of me that's hoping that I don't fall in love with this gun because if I do I'm going to have to have a very uncomfortable conversation with Claire at Air Arms. Okay. Okay, I might be having a very, con a very uncomfortable conversation. Okay, look like through the same hole just slightly to the right, 25 yards. Out the shoulder. Oh, that no. Right, that was me, 100% me. I'm not used to shooting out the shoulder. I don't practice enough. Although that is something I'm going to be doing predominantly for 2023. I'm going to start trying to move away from resting the rifle on the deck. I'm going to try and start learning to shoot more the way a Springer really should be shot. Now there are some people who do it brilliantly like Jake and Andy Day, Owen Wilson, um, Nigel Wood, but it's not something I've ever done. I've always shot a spring gun like almost like a PCP from the deck. It's worked for me in the past but I think it's a skill that I need to learn. Right, let's go again. Okay, we're making the hole fractionally wider. Things we're going slightly right. There is wind today. Um, don't know if that is affecting it, but all of those on a 15 millimeter target at 25 yards would all be kills. Tell you what, I'm going to shoot uh, the miss shot, the one underneath. See if I can see if we are going right, because I might give it a click left. Well, through the same hole. We'll go one more. Again, we're going to go at the bottom group now. Let's see how we go. Bottom hole.
Well, I think that's it, fractionally high. But again, shooting a 50 millimeter target at 25 yards, one of the hardest shots in HFT from the shoulder with a, a standard spring gun, that is the sort of level of accuracy you would expect from a gun like a Vire RKSW 97. It's what I'd expect from my TX. Now, this is the record trigger. Now, the record trigger is a, it's, it's a lovely trigger. I've, I've got them in quite a few of my guns. They're adjustable. Um, this one has got quite a long, we're unloaded as we've just shot. This one's got quite a lot of travel between the first and second stages. Now, if you take the stock off, there is a little tab that you can just tap in with a, with a soft hammer and it bends in and out and that will reduce your travel on your first stage. Then you've got this large screw here that adjusts the lightness of the trigger. Now, one of the beautiful things with a record trigger, and I'll put a picture up, is that you can actually see the two sears that, inter that basically connect with each other in the bottom right hand corner. And you can adjust to how much you want these sears to interact with each other. And there is a third screw underneath. And you can basically make it deeper or shallower and that will affect the break of the trigger. Now, having a hair trigger on a spring gun is not a particularly good thing. Now, I could go into how to adjust these, but there is a video on YouTube by a chap called, I think it's Shooting Dawn. If you just put in record trigger adjustment, it comes up, it's about three minutes long, and he explains it way better than I will ever do. So that's worth checking out, and he's, apparently he's a really good guy as well. But that's the kind of accuracy we've got at 25 yards. Let's push it out to 40, and let's see what we can do. And then we're going to have a bit of fun shooting a, a couple of tiny little targets and see if we can kill a few. Okay, so 40 yards, we're going to aim in bottom right of the card, or the bottom right of the top bit of the card. We'll put a marker down. When I'm shooting this gun, it's strange. Some rifles feel slow, some feel quick, the lock time. Essentially from the point where you pull the trigger to the everything exploding within the gun and sending the, the round down range. This feels like a very fast and snappy rifle. It feels absolutely lovely. Okay, got some right to left wind. Okay, so that moved around about half a mil dot is exactly what I expected it to do. So we'll continue aiming at the mark on the right and I'll be expecting it to hit on the left because obviously the wind is pushing it right to left. Okay, again slightly left. when I shoot the recoil is coming straight back into the shoulder which seems really nice Okay, that seems to be hitting low. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I wanna be 100% fair with this rifle, and I've never really shot it at 40 yards. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the cameras off, I'm gonna shoot it a little bit, see if I can learn it a bit more, and I'm gonna come back to you in a minute, and let's see what kind of groups we can put in. Just as we're going down to uh, set out the target, would you like to see me shoot the HW97K in competition? Um, out the shoulder, we're not going to change stocks or anything like that. 
if that's something you would like please just give me a message in the comments below um, it is putting things in the comments are really handy because it helps with the with the YouTube algorithm I always try to answer all the comments and get back to you if it's an older video it might take me a little while but I will eventually try and get back to everyone um, but yeah if you'd like to see me shoot the 97 or a head-to-head -head 97 versus TX 200 ultimate Smackdown let me know um, I think that could be a fun video so 97 in competition TX 200 V 97 Smackdown just let me know in the comments below thank you so much Okay, so I've put around about 30 or 40 rounds through it and I've learned something about this gun. On my TX200, it's a heavy gun in a heavy stock with lead all over it. And I grip it quite tight and I push my head down on the cheek piece and it doesn't really affect the rifle. This rifle prefers a lighter grip, a lighter hold. Let it recoil more than my TX does. It's not a bad thing, it's actually how most spring guns are, are meant to be learned, I'm sorry, meant to be shot. Um, okay, so here we go, we've got our Spitfire target made by flopover.co.uk, um, out at 40 yards. HW97K, in wind, making up all the excuses as we go along, and let's see what we can do. I honestly believe that the 25mm at 40 yards it's the hardest shot in HFT, especially if it's up a tree. <sighs> okay, we're going to give right hand side of the target. Sorry, right hand side of the kill zone. And a solid kill. So let's reset it, shoot the paddle below, these practice targets are superb. I'm actually quite glad the wind has just dropped, so I didn't give that as much as I was when I was shooting the cardboard. I was just outside right hand edge of the kill and if we actually have a look well, you can actually see that the uh, pellet has hardly moved just on the inside so let's aim to split it right edge solid kill that's two for two one thing I keep on looking at is on the TX, you've obviously got a bear trap to stop the everything flying forward. You have to press it, so I keep on trying to push it in. Okay, let's reset, we'll try and stick the same pellet mark. In the centre, did that reset? No, it didn't re I hit the plate, so I hit the paddle, but it didn't reset. It happens sometimes. There we go. The paddles on these are around about 45 millimeters, or might even be 50 millimeters across, so they're really relatively easy to reset. Okay, so two for two so far. Ah, first miss. But you can see correct height. We'll put that one down to wind. I must admit that time I was just inside uh, of the kill zone. So let's go back out onto the edge.
Ah, exactly the same point. Ah, that's annoying. See, that's not the accuracy of the gun because you can see that the pellet landed on top of the other one. That's just me not reading the wind right enough. Well, correct enough. I didn't give it enough. So now we're going to give it a quarter of a mil dot outside right edge. And there we go. Actually sound like it's split on the right edge. But that's the beauty or that's the annoying thing about wind. It's not constant. If it was, it would be easy. It gusts and it blows. And 30 seconds before I gave it inside right edge and it blew it across. Next time I gave it a little bit more and it barely took any wind at all. So let's reset. That's why it's so important when you're learning how to shoot. Shoot paper learn listen you know i'm listening and i can hear the wind blowing so sometimes i hold obviously you've got to shoot within two minutes but hold until i can hear the the wind stop and that's when i take my shot okay let's make this the last shot let's end with a kill just outside right edge and there we go a nice solid kill if I'm consistently knocking down 25 millimeter targets at 40 yards out the shoulder it shows that this is a gun that you can easily use in HFT very very impressive piece of kit actually one thing we are going to do I'll just set the camera up here on slow-mo and we'll film film shooting the uh, the front of the barrel to see what the the muzzle flip is like well We've had a lot of fun with the HW97K. We've learned quite a lot. It's incredibly accurate. We know they're well built. We know they're superb guns. Uh, at 25 yards, we were pretty much putting pellet through the same hole every time. At 40 yards in a really strong right to left wind, we were you know, getting a little bit of wind, about 20 mil left. But then when we were knocking down targets, we were hitting 25 mils. I think we killed four out of six, and the other two were literally just on the left-hand side because I didn't give it enough wind. Level of accuracy of this gun is superb. So This gun is every bit as good as the TX200. I prefer my TX. They're much easier to strip down. Um, with these rifles, if you've got to strip it down, you have to take the scope off, take the back section out. Um, we could do a strip down video in the future, but you know my relationship with stripping down Virox, and I don't know if I can afford the new window in the conservatory. But I love the TX because you can strip it down in under a minute, whereas these take a little bit more work. And so you've got to remove the scope. But accuracy wise, you, there is nothing between them. Um, out the shoulder, it's great. It's got a brilliant lock time, lovely trigger. Really happy with the gun. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Now, I'm hoping that some of you might have noticed a bit of difference today. Because for Christmas, I got two really important things. I got a brand new pair of Crocs, still in camo, but I'm still in my Crocs. So that's good. Just, and that's just to ups upset Terry Doe, because he absolutely hates them. And we've also got some new microphones. So hopefully the sound will be a little bit better today. Thank you so much for joining us here on the range today. Um, we've had a lovely time. Brilliant rifle, great scope. The Air Max Hawk uh, from Deben. Brilliant scope, 10 by 42, half mil dot. You've got the Hawk BRC uh, um, software you can get online, which helps you work out all of your aim points. Absolutely superb. We'll see you again very, very soon. We're gonna try and do some more pistol stuff in the next couple of weeks. And 
let us know what you want us to cover. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Ta-da.